Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm Steven, this is Bennett Gaming, and today's video is gonna be chill and relaxed. Like, I just wanted to turn the camera on today and just visit with you guys a little bit, uh, discuss a little bit about my thoughts regarding the Zonai. What? What? More of this? More of this? No, um, uh, recently I've, I was exploring the, the Typhlo ruins for a... Uh, another video that I was working on and for me I made some I thought they were pretty cool discoveries it was the first time I've seen this stuff uh, but I, I know you guys are you guys are so in-depth uh, and detail oriented uh, that's what I love about the Zelda community and like uh, watching all the theorists and everything uh, you guys are super detailed super thorough in your research and it's just like I just love that I love people that are detailed oriented and that uh, really uh, pay attention to things that are around them uh, during the game. And, and again, right, and, to, and that lends to the fact that the Zelda developers, uh, the, the series developers, actually take the time to put in all of those details, all of those mysteries uh, for us to enjoy and to explore. I, I, really, I really love the, the Zelda community and just uh, everything around it. But yeah, so recently, uh, when exploring the Typhlo ruins, I came across uh, two items that I thought were pretty significant, uh, in my opinion. Um, one was the dragon, the dragon head stone carvings. I think I think we've all seen and noticed, and, and there's a lot of videos out there discussing those things uh, around the, I believe it's the Spring of Courage uh, in the Faron region. Uh, we see stone carvings of a, of a boar's head, a dragon's head, and also of an owl. And uh, I'll go ahead and play an excerpt uh, from the Creating a Champion's uh, developer's note in regards to that. As we were in the process of creating the cities and people of every region of Hyrule, we thought that if we showed fragments of a civilization that collapsed long ago, it would make the world feel more real. That's why we added Zonai relics throughout Hyrule. The ruins are primarily animal-themed, but with the history of the Triforce from an ancient perspective in mind. The designs are symbolic, using dragons for courage, owls for wisdom, and boars for power. And yes, their name is a pun. Zonai is a take on Nazo, a word meaning mystery in Japanese. Senior lead artist, landscape, Makoto Yonizu. So, after knowing that, that this is a dragon's head, you know, just process of elimination, um, I started uh, looking around for these things. Um, actually, not looking around for it, but let's backtrack a little bit to where I was at in the Typhlo ruins. I stumbled across one of the stone, giant stone carved dragon heads, except what was really unique about this one was that the eyes uh, had insets of luminous stones. So literally the eyes of this stone carving were set with luminous stones. And it was just really cool to see that where, uh, you know, you see this luminous stone in the dark and you wander up to it and lo and behold, these luminous stones are part of this carved dragon's head. So I thought that was really fascinating. And then also exploring more and just trying trying to wonder and find the entrance to the, excuse me, oh, that's, that's so rude, my apologies. I'm, I'm sipping on coffee right now, and, and, uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, just forget, you, just forget you ever saw that. But anyways, I was going back to the, uh, the entrance to the Typhlo Ruins, just wondering, the wandering out, and I came across something that I thought I felt that this find was, was pretty significant. Um, it was a giant luminous stone 
Um, I'm not sure how it compares to other luminous stone that you can just, just general ore that you can find uh, around Hyrule and various places. But this particular luminous stone, it was reminiscent of the rock found on top of Mount Hylia um, on the Great Plateau. Uh, I believe it was near the Cryonis trial. Uh, that I believe it was a memorial stone to King, King Rome, or maybe that was speculation. Uh, but anyways, there's this memorial stone placed atop Mount Hylia. And this luminous stone in the entrance of the Typhlo ruins was very reminiscent of that particular memorial stone on top of Mount Hylia. And now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, it's really interesting that the memorial stone atop Mount Hylia is placed up on a high point, very prominent, very noticeable for all to see. And this luminous stone is at ground level in the Typhlo ruins, hidden in utter darkness of the Typhlo ruins. And what's really amazing about this particular luminous stone is that it is, it is surrounded by, um, I don't know, like five, six, I, I didn't really count, but multiple of these giant carved dragonstone heads in the Zonai style, all, all encircling this luminous stone. So it's like you walk into a path and there's a, this giant luminous stone in the center surrounded by all of these carved dragon heads. And um, it's, and the grounds around it are noticeable too. It's flowery, there's some flowers blossoming, uh, and it's a, it's a pretty location. You know, it's the, the design around this particular luminous stone, uh, I feel like lends itself to being a significant location. Um, uh, other, other places that come to mind are um, Satori Mountain, you know, like very, very pretty cherry blossoms and, and um, very pretty landscape uh, all around it. And um, the art style of Satori Mountain, uh, you, you go up there and even if the Lord of the Mountain is not present, you recognize that this is a significant location. And that's the, the same kind of feeling that I had about this particular luminous stone inside the the Typhlo ruins. It's a significant location. It's circular, surrounded by dragon heads, and and there's actually some some flowers uh, blooming around it. Very very subtle, but it's a uh, it just feels like a significant location in the game and part of the story. And my second discovery, it's first discovery for me. So if this is noted somewhere else, um, I'm not trying to take like first first person credit or anything like that. Uh, it was new to me, this was new to me. But at the Spring of Courage, uh, as you're traversing to the spring, you know, following the river to the, to the spring itself, uh, there are two wooden bridges on each side, on each side of the river. You're, you're following each side of the river banks and there are two wooden bridges that cross the river and continue to bring <laughs> sorry if you if you hear that there's like an ice cream truck like jamming some kind of crazy music in the background I'm not sure if you can hear that but <laughs> ice cream <laughs> distractions aside <laughs> I don't know how I feel about ice cream trucks in the cul-de-sac of my neighborhood. <laughs> but anyways, uh, going back to these, to the uh, the Faron region and the Spring of Courage, there's two wooden bridges that lead up to the spring. And, and uh, this time playing, I noticed that there are wood carvings on the post that support these wooden bridges. Wood carvings of, of different figures, and I believe there's five on each side, uh, that I've never seen before. And it makes me wonder, are these images of the Zonai tribe? 
or even if it's not titled the Zoni tribe, are these images of this particular culture in the game that belong to the Pharon region. And, uh, and they're really unique little figures. Uh, the, the nose is pointy, prominent. Uh, now that I'm thinking about it, almost Gerudo-esque type noses, very sharp, pointy. Um, uh, but the headdress, uh, there's two different styles of headdress that are featured on these wood carvings adorning these two bridges that lead up to the Spring of Courage. And I like to, I like to think it's fun, it's speculation, it's not theory. I like to think that these are actual wood carvings of, of the Zonai people, of the people that uh, performed a pilgrimage to the Spring of Courage. Um, I'd like to, I think it's, I think it's super cool. And what's even more fascinating, I don't know if the video footage that I have shows it, but if you look super closely on the statues, there's the little Zoni swirl with the little curly Q with the little, little tick mark, the, the one with the, the tail on it. Um, it's very faint, but it's on these little little figurine statues that adorn this bridge. And um, hopefully this is a new discovery. If not, it's new to me. And I was super stoked when I stumbled across these little images. Um, but I think that's really fascinating. And also that, that kind of got me sidetracked looking at all the, uh, the dragon heads uh, that were carved everywhere. And... Again, I was, I was finding those giant carved dragon heads in, um, you know, the Typhlo ruins. Uh, I believe they're noticed in the Pharaoh region around the Spring of Courage. And it's the exact same dragon heads that are carved uh, that are seen at each of the three labyrinths around the map. Uh, I was browsing, creating a champion a little bit. Uh, before this, nothing deep, no no detailed research or anything like this. But uh, the developers did note that although that design is seen in multiple locations, uh, in particularly discussing uh, the context of the Lome labyrinths, um, they said it doesn't necessarily mean there's a link to the between the Zona people and these these labyrinth structures, but it's it's kind of it's kind of hard not to think that there is a link uh, between them uh, because it's the same it's the same carving it's the same structure uh, found in these multiple locations, um, which brings me to I know I know uh, there's been so much talk of the zone and it's like basically like you know it's like it's like hunting for Korok seeds, right? You lift up a rock and it's like, what? Oh, is this, is this tied to the Zonai? What? Oh no. You know, like, oh, is that blade of grass over there? Is that, is that Zonai in origin? I don't know, maybe. <laughs> but anyways, it's fun. And I think, I think uh, all of these questions and the fact that we, we look and search for these traces and breadcrumbs of the Zonai people is a, is a real testament to the great job the developers did in creating this mystery, this, this shrouded mystery around this ancient civilization that appears to have risen to power. These are amazing structures that the Zonai have constructed, but they looked collapsed and worn and taken over by time itself. And um, all that's left is nothing but mystery. And I think the developers did a wonderful job of creating the mystery around these Zonai people, you know, and even using the name Zonai actually for like just a pun, you know, that means mystery itself. Uh, but with all of that, I find it hard to believe that this Zonai people, this race of people would not somehow play some kind of significant role in the sequel to Breath of the Wild. Uh, these are prominent structures all over the place. Um, 
it's raised so many questions in all of our minds as we've played Breath of the Wild over the years. And then we have the sequel to the Breath of the Wild trailer, that mysterious green arm that's surrounded in nothing but speculation. And I would like to think that it's a Zonai arm, you know, the, the you know, I, I, I feel like the, uh, the uh, I don't know, wrist bracelet or, you know, jewelry adorning that particular arm is re reminiscent of the style of this ancient civilization uh, found in the game. And also to, to come back to previous points that I was talking about all the way at the beginning regarding the Typhlo ruins, the, the way that the luminous stones adorned the eyes of that carved dragon head and also the very large, prominent, luminous stone found in the entrance of the Taufalo ruins makes me think that there is a connection between uh, the Zonai and, you know, in Breath of the Wild 1 and 2. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm not sure if I said that correctly. But anyways, what the point I'm trying to make is you have the use of luminous stones in these Typhlo ruins that, that I think are constructed by the Zonai. And then in the Breath of the Wild sequel trailer, this underground area is absolutely just littered with luminous stones. And, and you can tell like luminous stones are a very prominent uh, feature in this underground cave that Link and Zelda are exploring when they come across the corpse of Ganondorf. Um, so I think there's a link, and I, I like to think that the Zonai will pop up in the sequel to The Breath of the Wild. Uh, I just think there's way too many structures around Hyrule, and, and way, way too much, it, all, all of the speculation and theories around it have just been fascinating, and to, I think for Nintendo to not weave that Zonai, the Zonai people into this story somehow. Um, I, I find, it, find it hard to believe that it's just, uh, just a stylistic art choice just to create mystery. Um, I, I, think, I think we will see this, this Zonai people uh, in the sequel to the Breath of the, in the sequel to Breath of the Wild. Sorry, I was getting my tongue twisted a little bit there. But anyways, thank you guys for hanging with me to the end of the video. I, I know this was real casual. Again, these are just my opinions, my thoughts, my feelings about all, all of this. Uh, this, by no stretch of the imagination, is to be considered like a, a solid theory or anything like that. Just my pure speculation. And, and I don't want to... Um, I don't want to to come across it like I'm trying to create like a a new theory or anything like that. I think it's just fun for me. It's just fun for me to like just share my thoughts and speculations about this um, because there's a lot of creators out there uh, that do a wonderful job uh, creating Zelda theories, and they do a wonderful job of really fleshing out the details and tying up loose ends to create a solid theory and thesis uh, regarding things in the Legend of Zelda universe, and, and by no means do I want to take away from the work that those creators do. Uh, but thank you guys. Uh, hopefully this was entertaining and fun. Again, just my thoughts, feelings, and speculations, and guesswork uh, regarding some of my little discoveries uh, in the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share the video, and I will talk to you guys in the next video. See ya. Regarding the... Let's cut that out. Should we cut that out? Yeah, let's, let's, let's edit that out. Oof.